Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, come on in the room, come on in the room. Come in the room, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you, that's right. Come in the room, the Lord is great, he's powerful. The Lord is mighty. Good morning to all of you, come on in the room. It is April 12th. Good morning to all of you, come in the room. Come in the room, it is time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. It is time for us to magnify him, but he is great, he is powerful, he is mighty. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room, come on in the room. Yes, 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 yes. My, my, my God. Is, yes, good morning, Jesus and Barbara. That's right, let me know that you are here, that you came to bless the Lord. That you came, my God, to just let him know how much you love him and how much you need him. Good morning to all of you. Good morning to you, Dr. Evelyn. So good to see you. Good morning, Sarita. Good morning to all of you that are joining this wonderful morning meditation. Brother Rocky, oh, I love you too. Thank you for those hearts. Good morning, good morning to you. So good to see you. It's all the way from India. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. The Lord is great. He's powerful. Good morning to you, Sober Patterson. Good morning to you, Sister Linda, all of you that are coming in the room, let someone know that you are here. Good morning to you, Sister Yolanda, Brother Manny, good morning. So good to see all of you that are coming to bless the one another with your praise. Bless one another with the words that you have for them. Bless them one another and help me to teach this word on this morning. God is great. He continues to be great. Good morning to all of you. Listen, I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer and I'm going to get right to what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, we just bless your name. We praise you, O Lord God, for who you are. Lord God, and we combine our strength. We combine our power, O Lord God. The Bible says we're two or three are coming together in your name, Lord God, touching and agreeing on any on anything. Lord God, you are in the midst of us. So we thank you, Lord God. Yes, even for those of us that may be sick, God, we pray that you will continue, God, to bless and heal, God, in a mighty way. For you know, God, that you are a healer. We know, Lord God, that you will comfort the, those that are sick, God, those that are lost, God, those that may not be able to find their way. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God, for all that you continue to do for the people of God right now, Lord God. We know that it is you, God, that brings life. It is you, God, that brings resurrection. It is you, God, that brings resurrection and restoration, oh, Lord God. And when we cry out to you, God, for our refuge and for our strength, Lord God, you are there. So we thank you, Lord God, for recovery right now. We thank you, Lord God, for unification right now. We thank you for restoration right now. We thank you, Lord God, for healing our marriages, oh, God. And for those, God, yes, for healing our husbands and our wives, oh, Lord God, for bringing us together for, Lord God, we know that you are the one that brought us together. And God, because of that, we know, God, that whatever is going on, whatever issue, God, whatever tiff, whatever things are happening, happening right now, Lord God, you are going to bring those things back together. Thank you for crowning us, God, with your love and with your power, oh God, and thank you, Lord God, for your compassion and your brand new mercies, oh God, that you give us, God, each and every morning, God, there is nothing, God, no height, no depth, God, no, no living creature, Lord God, that can separate us from your love right now, God, even when we are weary, Lord God, in our spirit and our body, oh God, God, it is you that we draw strength from, it is you, God, that we draw comfort from, God, in the midst of our distress, oh God, yes, God, even right now, God, I pray my God, for our sister rise, God, in her time of bereavement, oh God, I pray, God, that you give her strength, God, give her that sustaining power, oh Lord God, that helps her to know, God, that you don't make any mistake, oh Lord God, that, oh God, yes, that she loved her mother, oh God, but I know, Lord God, that you knew what was best, God, for her, so bring, God, that family, God, back into perfect harmony, oh Lord God, that they will come to know, God, what it is that you have done in this hour, God, for their lives, oh Lord God, glorify yourself, God, in their thoughts, and glorify yourself, oh Lord God, God, and their, and their actions and their deeds, oh Lord God. And Lord God, give them strength, God, along this way, God, for this journey that they have to go, God, over the next few days, Lord God, uphold them, Lord God, with your power, God, strengthen all of us, oh Lord God, even God, yes, by your righteous right hand, will you hold us, God, yes, and in this midst, God, of all the situations, Lord God, give us peace that surpasses all understanding and guards our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus, oh Lord God. I pray it right now, Lord God, the healing power, Lord God, that touches us, God, and sustains us, God, and transcends the rooms that we are in right now, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, let restoration flow, restoration flow, my God, I speak it to the people of God that are listening right now to the sound of my voice, that restoration may flow in the mighty name of Jesus, like grace may flow, my God, about God, peace may flow right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, you created all of us, my God, for peace, you created all of us, my God, that we would not be in pain, you created all of us, oh God, that we may not be in issues, oh Lord God, so my God, comfort us right now as we gotta tend to your word my god and allow your word god to touch our hearts and our minds god and 
and reach us where we've not been reached before. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name, God, right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for your all-encompassing um, peace. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And we bless you, God. Amen. Good morning to all of you that are joining this morning meditation. So good to see all of you this morning. My God, we thank God for the strength. We thank him for the power. My God, yes. Go. Glory to God. My God, this morning, my God, I don't know who the Lord is speaking to this morning. My God said, Lord, are you talking to me? Oh, my God, are you talking to me this morning, Lord God? You said, listen, my God, time on your hands. My God, he said, should, could be time. Could be time spent with me. What are, you, what are you saying, God? He said, time on your hands should be, could be time spent with the Lord. He said, watch your idle mind. Watch your idleness. Oh, God, what are you saying to the people of God on glory to God this morning? My God, my God. Good morning to all of you. I, my God, those I didn't greet when I was yet in prayer. I think the Lord was, was trying to speak to us this morning in regard, my God, to the things that we may be going through. Good morning to you, Sister Felicia. Sister Sherilyn, good morning to you. God bless you, Sister Marilyn. To those of you, my God, that are here listening and waiting for a word from the Lord. I, I believe the Lord has something mighty special in mind for all of us this morning. Time on our hands, my God, should be time spent with my God, the Lord. And as I was speaking and thinking about this meditation this morning, as I was sharing, I was saying, thinking about the Lord. I was, I was meditating and focusing on God. And I was saying, God, what it mean if these things? I know there have been many people that have um, inboxed me and, and shared and talked with me about things that, my God, that they may be doing. And they say, Pastor Tina, is it okay that I do this? Is it okay that maybe I watch television? Is it okay that I read certain books? Is it okay that I look at certain movies? Is it okay that I just sit around and, and do nothing? Is it okay? What, is, what does the Lord think about that? And first of all, my 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 um, response, most of all, firstly, is to say, what is what do you think the Lord is saying? What Have you asked the Lord in regard to what it is that you are doing? And is are these things that you are doing, taking you away from what you believe the Lord has called for you to do? Are these things that you are doing, are they causing harm to somebody else? Are they causing harm to yourself? And are they causing harm for, just for someone else? Are they making you to do something that you know is causing some pain to someone else? Are these things that you are doing that are, that are you feel like they're taking too much of your time? You've, are you convicted in these things because the Lord did not come to convict or condemn you? So are you being condemned in these things? Things that you are, my God, are that you are doing. Um, I found this uh, scripture in the Word of God, and I said uh, it's found in Philippians chapter four, uh, verse number eight. The Bible says, "Finally, my brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there's anything um, excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise." You got to think about those things. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Time on my hands should be time spent with me, spent with the Lord. If you got time on your hands, I said, Lord, you cannot be talking about me because I don't have no time on my hands. But what is he really saying? What is he saying? He's saying those things, those those things, you know, that we think about. My, my God, the the, the sin, sin. Ah, my mind immediately went on David, even as I was in my prayer about, you know, um, there's a, a something we talk about the, the uh, idle uh, idle hands or the devil's workshop, but I don't necessarily believe that. Good morning to you, Sister Linda. Sister Nibby, so good to see you. I'll greet you all. Thank you all for greeting me. Thank you for greeting one another as you come into the room. I'm just excited to be here. I know I've missed you all over the last week, and I'm just excited for the word that the Lord is sharing today. But I know you've heard that saying that idle hands are the devil's workshop, but I, I don't necessarily believe that people of God. What I believe is that it's the mind, my God, that creates sin. I, I was I was thinking about this morning, uh, even David, as I was in my prayer and how David, my God, it, that sin, that thing that he was, that he did, that terrible deed that he did uh, with Bathsheba, with Uriah, with Bathsheba's husband, he conceived that thing in his mind. My God, he he thought about it, you all. He conceived it. He he devised that plan in his mind. It, was, it wasn't even David's hand that carried out the deed that caused that sin to come up on his life. David sent somebody else to do the dirty work, but it was the sin, my God, that was was was, was created in his mind. You, you don't even gotta do things, you know, in a, in a, uh, to act it out to sin. You all know that. I know we know that we're old, we're grown, we know things. We don't even have to act out the thing in order to have sin. Sometimes it just comes so much to us that uh, so 
easily. Sin does that sometimes we don't even realize it's going on. Sometimes we don't even realize that we've done it. And that's why sometimes we, when we pray, well, listen, this is what sometimes we do. Sometimes we pray, we pray, uh, we pray a prayer like this. We say, Lord, if I've done anything, forgive me for that. Because sometimes sin comes so easily to you. Some comes so naturally to you that you don't even realize. You think you don't even realize that you've done some wrong. You think you don't even realize that you've done something against somebody. You don't even know that you realize you've hurt somebody. If you caused some pain. Now, if you got a gun and shoot somebody, you kill somebody. Now, you know that you've done that. But sometimes there are some things that you don't, that you do that you don't think that you've really done. You don't realize the harm or the hurt that you've caused. And so that prayer that we pray, Lord, if I, forgive me for the specific things that I've done, but Lord, if I've done something against somebody else that I didn't know, Lord, forgive me of that too. Do y'all ever say that prayer? Glory to God. Sometimes we, we let our minds wonder. Glory. Yeah, come on in here, Sister Gina. We let our minds wonder. We, we let our minds wonder. Oh, come on in here, wives. Sometimes we let our minds wonder. We know we got a husband, but you saw that man over there in the mall and, and you let your mind wonder. You said, my wonder, I wonder what would happen if he was my husband. And I wonder what would happen if we were together. You don't even know nothing about the man. You just saw him and you thought he looked fine. And you, as a matter of fact, you saw him go outside and, and get in his Mercedes. And you said, oh, I wonder what would happen if, if I was his wife instead of the, the wife of the one that I had. Y'all know y'all do it sometimes. And you're only lusting after him because of the way that he looks. And you're not satisfied with, with the one that you know, with the one that you have, with the one that you've been with. And, and sometimes, husbands, we do the same thing. With, we're not satisfied with the one that we're with, the one that we've been with for, for 10 and 15 and 20, sometimes 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 years, my God. We begin to, to allow our minds to wonder, my God, and the Bible tells us, listen, we've, even if we just look on them and lust, my God, we've committed the sin already, my God, in our mind, we've already committed that sin. And so sometimes people of God, we allow our minds to wonder. And that's why the Bible tells us, listen, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, you got to think on those things. Glory to God. Don't let your mind sit and wonder about things, my God, that are not noble and not praiseworthy and not of excellence. My God, you better come on in here, somebody. Y'all better hear what I'm talking talking about this morning because sometimes my God, listen, I'm talking y'all, listen, time on your hands could be time my God spent mm, my God with the Lord. And I know the Bible talks about, you know, the, the, the one who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery. But come on, you better turn that thing around, women, because my God, you, you know that sometimes as women, we look on men with lustful intent. Glory to God. My, 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 my God. We think about it. How many times have we done it? Me and how many times have you done it? My God. Yeah. And you want to, and you want to ask forgiveness, but you don't want them to know that you did it. Glory to God. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Listen, we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. My, my, my God, the mind, the mind. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What was, what, what is uh, the United Negro college fund say that the mind is a terrible thing to waste, but specifically a mind is a terrible thing to waste on the enemy, when the enemy, my God, has not done anything for you. Oh, it is the Lord who does everything on you. So, so as Christians, as people of God, my, my God, yeah, we need to be disciplined in every aspect of our life. What are you saying, Pastor Tina? What I'm saying is that you need to be disciplined. We all need to be disciplined. Oh, in our thought processes, in the way that our mind wanders, wanders <laughs> in our wandering mind, in our wandering mind. Sometimes we got to be disciplined in that. Yeah. So we can, we can control our actions. Yeah. You're not going to go after the man and give him your number. I don't guess. Yeah. Some of you may, I, I, I hope you don't, but my God, you, we, we got to be disciplined. And even in our thought process, and we know that um, it takes strength for us to be disciplined and it takes strength for us to be in control of ourselves. What did Joyce Meyer say? She said, the battle is in your mind. The battle, the battlefield is going on in your mind. And so we got to know with, without us changing our mind, the Bible says we can't be conformed to the things of this world. We've got to be transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will that God has for your life. And without that change of your mind, Without you changing your mindset, without you recognizing that, 
My God, you got to know the enemy is trying to get you every day. He's looking for ways. He's looking for a, a, he's looking for a, a crack in the door. He's looking for just a, a, a beacon of light. He's looking for just a little bit just to come in, so Aurora. He's, he's looking for something just to get you. He's looking for something to knock you down. And my God, he's looking for something. He's looking for your tree that's not been planted by the rivers of water. The Bible says you got to de- de- meditate on the day and night. Y'all know the Psalm number one. And come on, you got to be, be blessed. You got to be transplanted. My God, where you got to have a, a changed mindset, transplanted by the rivers of water. Glory to God, where, where the Bible says you're blessed. Blessed is that man. Glory to God that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. The, some uh, some translations say the wicked one. Now, I see you, Sister Carla. You, you can't stand in the way of sinners. You can't sit in the seat of the scornful. But you got to delight in, my God, the law of the Lord. And on his law, you got to meditate day and night. What am I saying? Time on my hands could be time spent with the Lord. Time spent with the Lord. Lord, my God, where I can meditate on his law day and night, where I can know who he is and he can know my God. He already knows who I am. He knows every single thing, glory to God, about me. Sister Felicia, he said, then, then if you do that, you will be a stable tree. You won't be like a tree that's going to fall down with every wind, with every doctrine, with every storm that comes in. Oh, yeah, you may bring bend, baby, but you're not going to break. Glory to God. You're going to be planted by the rivers of water. Oh, it's in Psalms 1 that yields its fruit in the season. And, and, and it does that. The leaf, the Bible says, does not wither. What is it saying to us, people of God? It's saying in everything that you do, my God, it says you're going to be, you're going to prosper. And what does prosperity mean? We talk about prosperity all the time and we don't just mean money. Glory to God. Yeah, we don't just, we're just not talking about money, people of God. Even though we know the Bible says money answers all things, but it doesn't just mean money. Prosperity means just to move forward. Prosperity means, my God, you're prospering. You're doing well in your health. You're doing well in your wealth. You're doing well, my God, around you. You're, you're doing well, my God, in helping others to succeed. You're you're prospering, my God, in the things of God. You're prospering in the things, my God, of the world. You, my God, you're, pro- you're everything oh, you do, everything you touch, my God, is good. My God, in the things of God. The Bible says the wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. What's chaff? Chaff, my God, you, you, you see something like, it's not, quite, it's not quite as big as this, but you see like on the movies, they had like the tumbleweed on the desert. It doesn't, it doesn't, it can't hold on to anything. My God, chaff is like that. It's the wicked is like that. This When the wind blows, it just tumbles in the wind. Glory to God. I, I don't want to be one who tumbles in the wind, people of God. When the wind blows, it gets tossed and turned and, and moves with the sand. Glory to God. It, it doesn't have any attachment to anything. We've got to be attached, attached to something, my God. Oh, the Bible lets us know, my God, that the man who meditates on the law of the Lord, the man who puts his mind and focus on the things of God is able able to thrive and be strong and be powerful and be mighty and have influence and give direction. Glory to God. Listen to me. You know, you're talking about those influencers and be an influencer in the kingdom of God. Don't, aren't you ready, my God, to be an influencer instead of being influenced by everything that's happening? Listen, we need to be able to take our thoughts. The Bible says captive. Bring them captive. Uh, come on, under the mighty hand of God. In place, w- replace whatever the thoughts are that are in your mind, my God, listen, oh yeah, 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 time on your hands could be time spent with the Lord, allow your thoughts to become captive and subject to the word of God, yes, thank you, Sister Barbara, stand on the word of God, when we do that, then whatever happens to us, whatever goes on in our lives, whatever situations and circumstances are we are being faced with, then we're going to respond in a godly way, we're going to respond in a guard, uh, a godly manner rather than resorting to the thing that the enemy would want you to do people of God we've got to be able glory to God to respond in godliness when you when you when you're thinking on godliness when you're thinking on excellence when you're thinking on purity when you're meditating on those things people of God then then you will be able to respond in that way when you're when you're faced with uh, cursing when you're faced with people of, of, of impatience, when you're faced with issues that happen in your life, if you have fed yourself constantly with the word of God and you fed yourself constantly with the things of God, 
My God, when you're faced with those issues, come on in here, people of God that are not like God. You're not going to respond in that manner. You're going to respond godly. Because why? Because you've been transformed. You've been renewed. And no matter what it is, uh, come on, you recognize that God still is King of Kings and God still is Lord of Lords. You're going to meditate, my God, on those things that are going to bring you life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Time on your hands. Could be time spent with God. Because we recognize, my God, when we feed our flesh, when we draw into the things of our flesh, when we, oh yeah, when we, when, we, when, we, when we pull into the things of our flesh, that only will lead to destruction. Yeah. But when we draw into the things of the spirit, that will bring us to eternal life. What, what are the things, my God? It, ha, my God. It, yeah. Yeah. So we'll look at the look at uh, Proverbs sixteen twenty seven. I was trying to find a scripture in the Word of God, Sister uh, Cynthia, that kind of matched what I was saying. Uh, the Lord, the Lord was speaking this. Like, God, are you who are you talking to this morning? Who are you talking to? Have our minds become so idle that Lord that, that we've stopped thinking about you? Have our minds become so idle that we've become reckless in our thoughts and reckless in our actions? Have our minds become so idle, Lord God, that we've gone so far away from you. That, Lord, that you're not able to bless us in the way that you want to bless us. I, you, I know the Lord has so many blessings in store for us. My God, he's got so many blessings in store for us. Proverbs 16, 27, there are different translations. They said, listen, it says a worthless mind, man devises mischief and his lips there is a scorching. Uh, oh my God. There, there, there are a lot, a lot of other different translations uh, uh, of that same particular, the New International Version. It says a scoundrel plots evil and on their lips is like a scorching fire. The King James Version says an ungodly man diggeth up evil and in his lips there is a burning fire. Listen, we're talking about what happens when people have idleness in their heart and idleness in their mind. Glory to God. We're talking about an idle person. And here the Bible describes him as worthless and a scoundrel and ungodly. My God. And we think about those things as people are plotting evil, plotting. When you're sitting and thinking, when people of God, when you're sitting, you don't have nothing to do. You know, so so the, the persons that talk to me about if I'm watching television, listen, I watch television on you know, my downtime. Look, glory to God. When I have some downtime, I want to just relax. Yeah, my me time. Yeah, I may binge on a couple of television shows on my me time. It gets my mind. Up. It's it's kind of like um, it's kind of like when you uh, have you all ever gone to a uh, um to try some different perfumes on or colognes or whatever, and they give you different colognes and you try them. But in order for you to get one smell out of your out of your nose, the aroma out of your nose, they give you coffee beans to remove the aroma. So that when you smell the next one, that aroma won't be in your nose. So for me, it's like that when I could, I could have some downtime. So the, the binging on the television is like my coffee beans. It removes the, the, the day, it removes the, the um, activity of the day. I can relax and then go to bed and get some rest. Coffee beans. That might, that might be a message for another time. Coffee beans. But when, my God, when you are correlating the evilness and the idleness, oh my God, to the devil's workshop, the devil's just saying, I'm going to use you not thinking about God. I'm going to use you not thinking about good things. I'm going to use you not thinking about pure things. I'm going to use you not thinking about things of excellence. I'm going to use you to carry out what I want you to do. Again, I begin to think about David. I'm going to use you to carry out what it is that I want you to do. So what is it that we have to do, people of God, in order to make sure that we are not being used by the enemy as we sit idle, as our minds are idle, as we're not thinking about things that we need to think about, as we are sometimes consciously and subconsciously, unconsciously thinking about things that are bringing death, death and detriment to our own life because they're bringing sin into our heart. They're opening doors to sin. First of all, what do we got to do? We got to understand and recognize that that enemy is a liar. John 8 and 44 says that he's a father of lies. Now, thank you, Elder Gail. We can't allow the enemy to use us because he's a liar. And then not only that, we got to make sure that we keep on the whole armor of God. We got to keep on the breastplate of righteousness. We got to keep our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We got to keep the armor. Yes, yes. 
the sword of the spirit. We got to keep them on. We've got to make sure, my God, that we are aware of Satan's attacks, of his attempts, of his schemes. So we know, my God, that we can combat those things. The enemy is not stronger. He's not more powerful than us because we've got the word of God in us. And there are some things, my God, that we can surely do to allow ourselves not to be used by the enemy to make sure that, my God, our minds are not, oh, my God, the devil's playground. Our minds are not being used by the enemy to do his bidding for us. First of all, one, one thing we need to make sure that we do is watch the company that we keep. I read it already in, in um, Psalm 1. Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't be misled. Uh, my God, 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says to us that bad company corrupts good character. You think sometimes, oh, I, it's all right. I used to, I used to have people and, and friends I used to hang around in high school. My mother didn't like me too. I said, mom, come on, they all right. Oh, uh, they really weren't. She knew much more than I knew. They really weren't, it, it was, it, but I had to come to myself. I had to be like the prodigal son. I had to come to myself and recognize that they weren't going the way that I wanted to go. They weren't going the way that the Lord lead me, lead, was leading me. And especially they didn't know where God wanted to take me. And so therefore it wasn't their fault. They didn't understand, but I had to know for myself what God wanted to do in my life in order for me, my God, to break free. I had to hope people, God, I had to break free, break free. I had to shake myself loose. What Vicky Wine said, shake yourself loose. Sometimes you got to shake yourself loose from company, from people who are trying to influence you to do something that you know that God does not want you to do. And maybe, my God, you don't know what exactly what it is that God wants you to do, but you know what he doesn't want you to do. Who you associate with matters, people. Who you hang out with, that matters. Watch the company that you keep. My God, oh my God, oh, the enemy is straight busy. He's busy, Sister Gloria. You got to recognize, my God, time on your hands can be time spent with the God. Because, my God, the enemy, my God, will put people in your path to make sure that you don't go where God wants for you to go. Because he understands the plan that God has for you. He don't know the whole plan. Oh, yeah, but he sees, my God, he sees inklings of the plan. Listen, no matter, matter of fact, you can't allow, glory to God, you can't allow anger, my God, to continue to reign in your body. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27, I got to get out of here. It says, in your anger, don't let sin, don't let, uh, don't let sin, do not sin. But don't let the sun go down on your wrath. If you're still angry, he said, if sun goes down on your wrath, you will get the enemy, give the enemy a foothold. What is that saying here, people of God? You're give, you'll give the, uh, op, uh, the enemy an opportunity to do some damage that should not have to be done. One way we give the enemy an opportunity when we get angry, we get mad, and my God, we go to bed mad, we get, then, then my mind is thinking, we can't sleep, people of God. Oh my God. Yeah, you, you see it, listen, Linda. The, we, we can't sleep. So we're thinking, here we go. An idle mind. Could, time on my hands could be time spent with God. But we're mad. We go to bed. We can't sleep. We're thinking about it. You did this and you did that. My God, and because we're thinking about it, we're, we're allowing that thing to get much bigger than what it really should have been. The Bible says, come and let us reason together. Yeah. So what do we do? We give the enemy. It is, it's, in, it's in Ephesians chapter 4, 26 and 27. We give the enemy an opportunity then to come in and grab on to that. Oh, that anger. We give the enemy an opportunity to not only grab onto that anger, but braid it into unforgiveness like a braid. Glory to God. I can see anger and unforgiveness and I can see bitterness coming together. And not only becoming a braid, people of God, I can be, see it becoming like a dread, like a dreadlock locking together. And that, for, that gives the enemy, my God, allowing him an opportunity to have a field day in your mind. And sometimes he will do it so much. It'll be so powerful and so strong. Listen, I said like a dreadlock, people of God, that it'll be hard for that to untangle. So what, is he, what, is, what am I saying this morning? I'm saying this morning is that when you get angry, yes, I understand something happened. You get angry, forgive quickly and move on. Because if you allow it to fester, it, it, will, it, it won't get better. It will only get worse. So forgive quickly. Don't give the devil an opportunity. Time on your hands can be time spent with God. Don't spend that time with the enemy. Oh, don't, don't, don't do it. Meditate. What I say? Philippians 4 and 8. Meditate on what's good. Meditate on what's pure. Meditate on what's lovely. Meditate on what's oh, praiseworthy. If it's excellent, meditate on those things. What do you spend our time thinking about? What do we spend our time doing? 
What, what, what do we look at on television? What, oh my God, what, what are the things that we do? Find some things that are uplifting that you can, my God, that you can, uh, uh, continue to meditate on those things. My God, I, I want to, I want to know what is it, ha, ah, that right now, that's just on your mind that you are allowing the devil to play with you. <laughs> You're allowing the devil, my God, to play in your mind. Right now, you tell the devil he's got to go. Evict him, yeah, from your mind. It is time to give the devil the eviction notice from your mind. Because the time that you're spending, the time on your hands, my God, the devil will use that. And he'll use it against you. Father God, I just bless your name. Lord God, I praise you for what it is you're doing for the people of God on today. And Lord, through this meditation, I know, Lord God, that shackles are being broken right now. Lord God, I my state. They your shamayas, yes, your like I shot my dis. Lord God, your chains are broken right now, Lord God. Captives are being set free right now. Because Lord God, we have an understanding of what it is that you want us to do and how you want us to move and breathe, Lord God, how you want us to function, Lord God, and how you want us to respond right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God. So Lord, right, we thank you for giving us the opportunity right now to close the door to the enemy in our mind. Now, but before we close the door, Lord God, we evict him. We kick him out. Satan, you have to go. We thank you. Mind my Lord, God, for what it is that you're doing right now in the lives of our children, our family, our husbands, our wives, oh God. And Lord God, forgive us for how we allowed the enemy to use us uh, for his good and for his glory. But Lord God, right now, we will not be used by the enemy anymore. We will not allow him to walk with us. We will not stand with him and we will not sit with him. For Lord God, we want peace and prosperity in our lives and in our families, in our situations all the day long. And Lord God, we thank you that it is you, God, that will allow us to have that. God, we come against any bitterness. We come against strife right now. We come against anger. We come against malintent. We come against, my God, anything that would cause us to be angry angry or depressed. We come against oppression right now. Everything, every trap the enemy has set, my God, against us. It shall not work. We thank you, my God, that every stronghold that has been placed in our mind, my God, like a web, like, oh my daddy, my God, my God, my like as your mighty, like a dreadlock, my God, it, it is, my God, being dismantled right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For you, God, our Lord, you are our King, you are God, our God, you are our Savior, God, and we thank you for what it is that you are doing, my God, in the lives of the people of God. We thank you for your healing power, Lord God, and we thank you, my God, for sending fire down from heaven to bring revival, God, in the cities, the revival in the communities, revival in our churches, God. We thank you, my God, for the leadership, my God, of the churches, my the leadership, my God. We thank you for the pastors, the bishops, the apostles, my God. We pray that you will give them the strength to continue, God, to lead their congregations, my God. Even, my God, in this changing world, oh God, lead them, God, in a way that they will come to hear you, God, through them. Hear your word, your word of love. And your mind, your love, I shake, I will see them, I see that I might see your Lord, your mind, your, your word of peace, oh God. My God, help us, my God, to know, my God, that Satan is a liar. He's the master of lies. He is a master deceiver, oh God. And my, we thank you, Lord God, that we shall no longer lend him our mind, oh God, yes, to do his bidding. We thank you, Lord God, yes, that you are our righteous king we thank you lord god yes for sending jesus christ to the cross that we would be free delivered and set free my god forevermore lord god yes it's not a temporary situation but lord god you did it forever we thank you for the permanency of your love your love and we thank you for the permanency of your grace we thank you for the permanency god of my god your power the permanency of your forgiveness we thank you for the permanency of your mercy oh god and we thank you my god that you my god are our god and you continue god to do work such great and mighty God acts God feats God in our lives Lord we thank you my God yes for this word that has gone forth oh God you are our wonderful counselor oh God thank you my God for the comfort for the people of God for those who have lost loved ones my God I again ask God for your comfort God and peace for sister Rise and her family oh God and Lord God for those my God that have lost loved ones God I thank you my God that you are healing those that are sick raising from their beds of affliction oh God thank you my God for sister Angela God for how you're healing her touch her mind 
crying in her heart, God. Even the emotional places, oh Lord God, that you've got to touch. Touch them right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Reach out your hand. For Lord God, we know that you can do it, God. Even from where you are, Lord, give us the full strength, my God, that we may be able to do what it is that you call for us to do. For the Bible says, yes, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For night comes when no man can work. People of God, yes, we've got to do the work that God has called for us to do. We thank you for healing. We thank you for strength and recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray in an amen and amen. Oh my God, people of God, allow my God, your mind to be used for what God wants you to use it for. Time on your hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me time spent. Oh yeah, thinking on the things of God. Ah, oh, my God, my God. Uh, yes, glory to God. Listen, ha, isn't God good? Isn't he just great? I got to go from here praising God. But listen, I want to make sure that I remind you again about this, our resurrection service on Sunday, uh, April 17th. Glory to God at Kingdom Life Christian Cathedral. That is 707 Sherman Avenue in the city of South Bend, Indiana. I want to invite all of you. That will be an in-person service. We are going to have a wonderful time. If you are in our area, please come and visit with us where the apostle is Apostle Michael Patton. And I share the pulpit with him. I am the pastor Tina Patton. And I love you all so much with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. You go in peace.